Good day and welcome to another edition of Outdoor Adventures Radio with host Gary Howie. I'm Simon Fuller. Gary, a new week, that means a new adventure awaits. What are we going to be talking about today and throughout the week? Simon, let's talk about archery season that's going on. You and I are both uh, archers and uh, we've hunted deer and turkey and whatever, but this time of year... Most of the seasons open up around uh, 1st September, 1st of October for, for deer and then antelope that's uh, opened up a lot earlier. But yeah, archery is a, is a great sport. The bows have changed so much. Uh, sights, everything is just uh, so much more advanced. The compound bows and, and the let off and so forth really uh, make it uh, a lot easier than it was. You still have to practice and that's that's a big thing. <laughs> You know, we talk about scouting, how you need to scout, but with a bow and arrow, even a rifle, you need you need to shoot to uh, to get things lined up, make sure everything works all right. Yeah, Gary, and it's one of those seasons that I truly, it's my opinion, and I think most would agree that's uh, an outdoorsman that have done different activities. It's one of the closest seasons to really get with God's country. I mean, you're sitting in that tree or a tent, whatever you choose, uh, all those aspects, not just the harvesting, but everything that goes into it before that moment. You bet. And this time of year when the colors are changing in the trees and stuff and with the corn and everything that's coming out now and a little later, uh, you're going to see more wildlife. You know, you might see mink, you might see coons, you might see, hey, you name it, waterfall, whatever, and then hopefully a deer. (laughs) Thank you, Gary. Look forward to discussing the archery season more as the week rolls on. It is certainly my favorite time of the year. And we'll kick that off tomorrow, getting more specific with with the antelope archery season. Thank you again for joining us today and to our fine sponsors who make Outdoor Adventures radio possible. Until next time, may your adventures be great. Good day and welcome to another edition of Outdoor Adventures radio with host Gary Howie. I'm Simon Fuller. This week's topic, archery hunting. Gary, today let's break down pronghorn or antelope, where to find them and how to go about harvesting one of these very fast animals. Well, you know, they they inhabit land that's uh, hilly, grassland that sometimes comes in conjunction with some uh, trees, but not a whole lot. And mostly, you know, they're found in the western United States uh, in South Dakota, Nebraska, they're found on the other side of the Missouri River in South Dakota and in the Sand Hills in Nebraska. They've got super, super eyesight as well as uh, hearing. You know, they've got those ears that kind of move around like radar and so forth. But this time of year is when the, when the bucks put together their harem. And they're pretty aggressive if uh, another antelope buck comes into their area. So, you know, it's, it's not unusual to see, you know, one chasing another buck out through the country trying to get them away from their harem. So uh, they're fast. They can pick it up and lay it down. They, they can really move. And you might find them on uh, one hillside, try to put your sneak on them, and uh, before you know it, they're two hillsides over. So they're, they're, a, they're a lot of fun to hunt. And, you know, you mentioned uh, different ways to hunt them. You know, one of the big ways of hunting them is uh, water holes, mm-hmm. farm ponds, and that's mm-hmm. with the blind people can set it up and again scouting is pretty important you want to scout where they're watering scout where they're at and then you can put that blind up ahead of season so it's nothing that's going to spook them they're fun to hunt it doesn't take much to uh, to put them down they're pretty light-skinned animals but uh, again practice and scouting is pretty important thank you gary for the great information hope you can take some of those tips and tactics along with you on your next antelope hunt Thank you for joining us today, and a big thanks to our fine sponsors who make Outdoor Adventures Radio possible Monday through Friday. Until next time, may your adventures be great. Good day and welcome to another edition of Outdoor Adventures Radio with host Gary Howie. I'm Simon Fuller. This week we're talking archery hunting. Yesterday we spent some time discussing antelope. Today we'll shift gears a little bit and talk about the archery season for deer. This time of year when the deer are still in velvet, and a lot of these seasons open up early enough where some of these archers may may actually get a velvet deer, and they make a beautiful mound. I know a kid from Why Not, Nebraska, just took a beautiful five by five in velvet. With deer, you can hunt from a blind, you can hunt from a, a stand, you can stalk them too if you're if you're really good. You know, still hunt them, walk up on them, move in on them. The thing is, the scouting is the big thing. We keep preaching that, but, you know, if you don't know where they're bedding, where they're feeding, what direction they're going, and so forth, you're just walking around, you know, have a nice walk in the park, basically. But, yeah, scouting is really important. Also, decoys, both antelope and deer. 
decoys work. Uh, antelope, you can use a, like a Montana decoy, which I use. You can almost walk right up on them, but then, of course, you've got to make the shot. Uh, the last time I didn't judge the distance, right, the shot underneath them. But if you've got a decoy, they move right up on them. One of our team outdoorsman adventure guys, uh, Jared Wire, I lined to hunt up with him, for him out in Cricket Horn Outfitters, way up in northwestern South Dakota. And what they do is, uh, being the antelope and the horses are in the same general area, they walk beside the horses. They walk uh, as close as they can, and then the guy's got the front horse, and the archer kneels down, draws his bow, and they walk, the guy walks it away, and you're right there, right next to him, and get a really good shot. It's kind of an ingenious way to do it. Thank you, Gary, for the great information. Join us tomorrow as we'll continue this discussion on archery hunting deer. Thank you for joining us throughout the week and to our fine sponsors who make this broadcast possible. Until next time, may your adventure be great. Good day and welcome to another edition of Outdoor Adventures Radio with host Gary Howie. I'm Simon Fuller. This week we're talking archery hunting. Today we continue talking about deer hunting and how important preparation is. When you're archery hunting, you're usually 40 yards and in. Some guys will shoot up to 50, 60 if you're really confident, have done a lot of practicing, but most shots are taken within 40 yards. Yeah. You have to get pretty close to that animal. You do. Uh, and that sounds easy, but it's not. No. It th- never you know, is. As much scouting as you do, you know their paths, you, you use their senses, you use maybe some of the estrus, and you use your blind, you use your camouflage, you use your cameras to know where they're going. It's still not easy. No, it isn't. It's definitely not. Just like the antelope we talked about earlier, their hearing and their eyesight, we're going into their living room, basically. You know, they know what's there. You know, they've been there. And if anything changes, it might spook them. And especially if there's there's a lot of of hunters going through the public ground and stuff, the pressure will will push them off, that's for sure. You know, there's just a lot of ways, as we mentioned, to to hunt. Kind of a fun story that uh, you were going to tell about a gentleman you knew. Yeah, a uh, late friend, Otis Toad Smith, he's from Iowa, I think Sheldon. I don't know if he developed it, but he, he got it down to a science. What he did was wait for a windy day, get the wind in his face, and then go to a cornfield, and the wind's rustling all those leaves and so forth. Then walk in, look both ways down the road, just take your time walking in. Once he saw the uh, deer that were bedded, generally they're bedded in the corn, he would back off two rows and go down that row so he's directly behind the deer and then he would he would would take him that way and he did very well he was an excellent uh, excellent archer excellent hunter thank you gary for the great information thank you as well for joining us and to our fine sponsors who make outdoor adventures radio possible monday through saturday until next time may your adventures be great good day and welcome to another edition of outdoor adventures radio with host gary howie i'm simon fuller This week we've been talking about archery season, and the last couple days we've talked about deer hunting. As with all activities, Gary, you've got to put in the time. That's with anything. If you're going to be good at what you're doing, you're going to have to practice. Right, and as you mentioned, do a little research and know what their food source is, know where they're bedding, know their trip to the watering hole, whatever that might be, a river, creek, pond, etc. When you know all those things and can put it into play, you can put yourself in a better position to have an opportunity at a 40-yard shot or, or inside. Uh, again, camouflage, taking all the, using the wind in your favor, using some of the decoys we talked about and maybe some of the cover scents. And then once we are so fortunate as to then maybe harvest that deer, Still some prep and some extra steps as we get ready to bring it to the dinner table. Yeah, it's like any game that you have. You've got to uh, prepare them properly, clean them up. Basically, open them up and and, then remove the innards and then uh, get them to the vehicle as quickly as possible without dragging them through too much stuff. One other thing, Simon, is that, you know, there's a lot of deer around. And uh, DNR, the Game and Park, actually issues what they call depredation permits, and they can get quite a few of them. Uh, what do you do with all that meat? South Dakota has the same type of program. I'm sure Iowa does. Feeding the hungry type deal. There's uh, butcher shops and so forth that in South Dakota they pay the pay the butcher to do it. Nebraska, it's a volunteer thing. I don't know what it is in uh, in Iowa for sure, but. Uh, that that meat, basically ground venison, goes to feed the needy, which right. is, is a good deal. A fantastic program that is helpful on so many different levels. Thank you, Gary, for the great information. Thank you for joining us today. And to our fine sponsors who make Outdoor Adventures Radio possible Monday through Saturday. Until next time, 
May your adventures be great. Good day and welcome to another edition of Outdoor Adventures Radio with host Gary Howie. I'm Simon Fuller. This week we've spent talking about archery hunting and the last few days specifically deer archery hunting. Gary, it's a fantastic outdoor activity and one thing as we end the week we want to talk about is managing the herd. If you want to manage your deer, you want to have a good buck to doe ratio, you're going to have to have to take some of those does out because uh, if a deer's got 20, 30 does, he's not going to come looking for, for much because he's got so many around him, he doesn't need to do much searching. So if you get that buck to doe, some people say it's one to five, and I've heard some even say one buck to one doe is ideal. So it's one of those deals. But again, you can donate that meat, and it uh, goes to the, meat, to the needy, which is especially, you know, this time, this kind of year, it's pretty handy. Yep. Gary, a great outdoor activity. I love archery hunting. So many more activities just like this. Outdoor adventures can be found 24-7. Yeah, well, on our website. Uh, for the TV show, it's outdoorsmanadventures.com. For myself, it's Gary Howie's Outdoors. In addition, love to catch you on the television. When and where can I do that, Gary? Well, it airs in South Dakota, Nebraska, Minnesota on that Midco Sports Network. Nebraska on News Channel Nebraska, as well as local markets. Throughout Iowa, we're on local markets. You just want to check and uh, see the, the time and and the date that they're on, and you'll be able to catch us on the TV. And, of course, always at MyOutdoorTV.com. Check them out. And, uh, Gary, we thank you so much for joining us on the radio. Look forward to catching up with you again next week. It's always my pleasure, Simon. Thanks again, Gary. What a great outdoor adventure we had this week. We look forward to, of course, doing this each and every week. And we thank you for joining us and our fine sponsors who make this program possible Monday through Saturday. Until next time, may your adventures be great.